or these these uh, Finnish companies are top of the world. And so the first one is about is about atomic layer deposition technology. And you may have uh, read or heard that uh, Dr. Tuomo Suntola, the Finnish physicist, he was granted the so-called Millennium Technology Award, which is kind of Finnish version of the Technology Nobel Prize. So he, he uh, so Dr. Suntola got uh, got this uh, Millennium Technology Award in 2018. So two years ago about this invention, this technology, ALD. The person who is going to present this is Sami Snek. He is the business executive at Benek, which is one of the leading companies in the world for producing equipment and, of course, the technology for ALD. So Sami uh, got his uh, uh, his background is a Master of Science in Chemical Engineering. So like we have heard before, this is also a very important contribution uh, to, to photonics. So chemical industry, chemical material science and so on. And he got, uh, Sami got his degree from the Helsinki University of Technology. He joined uh, Benek already 15 years ago, so 2005, and he has held uh, various professional and management positions at Benek as a product manager, application manager, director of the ALD group, head of the sales, and also head of the Asia, of uh, where he, he spent uh, two years in Shanghai, China. So his special expertise is really in the atomic layer deposition technology and also the business development. So he has been playing a vital role in introducing this technology in many various fields, is uh, ranging from jewelry to photovoltaics, optical coatings, and semiconductor industry. And today we are going to hear more about the the kind of uh, photonics applications. This presentation will be uh, recorded, and that's why so you can you can give your your questions on the chat, on the meeting chat window but all the questions will be asked at the end of the, the presentation. So, Sami, the floor, the stage is yours. Welcome. Okay, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And somebody please confirm that you can hear me. Yes. Very nice. Next, uh, next important step is to be sharing the screen as well. So, is that also working properly? Yes. Very good. So, uh, yes. Yes, Th thanks again for the uh, kind introduction and invitation to, to talk about this uh, wonderful technology, atomic layer deposition. Uh, the, the title of the, of the presentation today is uh, Conformal Optical Codings. Uh, using the atomic layer deposition uh, technology. Uh, so it says optical coatings and uh, uh, this, so the ALD as I will describe today is uh, very much suitable for the photonic applications, but it also uh, finds use in uh, other, other types of optical coatings as well. So in the very small, small devices, but also larger objects. But uh, anyway, let's let's get started. So the first word actually there was conformality or conformal coding. So uh, what do we mean by that? So so we mean uh, what is shown here on the on the right hand side is that uh, uh, if we have a, this blue object that we want to coat with ALD, it is possible to coat it with uh, with uh, from all, all around the object, inside, outside, any holes, whatever it may have, can be coded. That's the conformality. And uh, usually it can be done also with very nice, very good uniformity. Uh, whereas in other techniques, uh, some are conformal, like uh, liquid phase processes. So you dip it somewhere and you get it coded everywhere. 
but uh, coding is far from uniform and it may be difficult to, to code some uh, smaller pores and, and holes of, of the parts and uh, and if they get coded then there may they may uh, so the liquid may stay there and and you get a lot of excessive kind of film growth there whereas the so-called source controlled or line of sight methods such as typically PVD methods sputtering evaporation such things tend to coat the side of the object that is towards the source but uh, not the other side and uh, the CVD in general is something a little bit in between so it's possible to do using certain type of process tricks to get uh, get some coding on the on the back side as well you still get more on the on the front side and and uh, it, it's uh, not possible to coat inside all kinds of smaller smaller features so that's what ALD really does best okay and what is ALD or what what happens during the ALD process is is described next. So uh, basically, we have some part that we want to coat. We put that inside the so-called ALD reactor or ALD tool. And uh, uh, typical pr process conditions are that it's under vacuum, not always, but usually under vacuum. Uh, typical process pressure about one millibar. And then we heat it up to suitable process uh, temperature, which is typically something in between 70 and 400 degrees C. Uh, depending on the on the chemistry and application and many things that uh, you will hear more about soon. Uh, okay, so what happens to that part then is that uh, it is uh, so this gray surface here represents the the the, the substrate. And then we uh, introduce two gases, so really vapors or gases, uh, and one at the time. So the first gas here comes in. In this case, this is uh, what we call TMA, so trimethyl aluminum, but it can be many other things, but that's the example here. So the TMA molecule comes in and uh, uh, it starts to react with the surface as long as it can find free surface sites so and uh, uh, it will continue uh, reacting on the surface and uh, eventually all the surface sites will be occupied and uh, we say that the surface has been saturated so there is no more deposition happening uh, then uh, at this point we purge the system so that we kind of flush it with nitrogen so that we get uh, the remaining TMA molecules away from the gas phase and then uh, we can introduce the second reactant here which in this case is water again as the vapor and uh, uh, that will start reacting with the surface again and uh, it will also continue as long as there are reactive sites available and eventually the, the surface will be saturated with that kind of reacted water. So there will be OH groups on the on the on the top. And we have this way uh, we have completed one uh, ALD cycle. Then we will again purge the remaining kind of water molecules away and we can continue to introduce the TMA again. So what is described here is one ALD cycle and then we just do as many of those as we uh, want to to reach the desired film thickness. Typical growth per cycle, as it said, is, is about one angstrom, so 0 0.1 nanometers uh, when we go through these four steps. So uh, the real kind of benefits and, and drawbacks of ALD can be derived from this picture. So the really good thing is that it makes very high quality films, pinhole free films and conformal on whatever the surface structure is and the the not so good thing is that uh, it is rather slow because uh, doing all these things we get one angstrom of growth so to make a uh, to make a uh, 100 nanometer film we need to repeat these steps 1000 uh, times okay uh, in practice these one ALD cycle takes, uh, depending on the on the configuration and setup and batch size and many things, anything 
from between one second and one minute typically. So most commonly some, some seconds. Okay, uh, so it can, based on the way it grows, uh, the uh, ALD can, can deposit very conformal fills and they can be conformal in the micro scale, so in the small scale. As, as shown here, actually in this image, there is a, a silicon uh, substrate with uh, with kind of the, this kind of uh, high aspect ratio uh, structure etched to it, and then and then there is a multi-layer ALD stack that uh, follows very nicely all those features. So there's a uh, hundred nanometers of uh, of alternating aluminum oxide and titanium oxide uh, ALD layers. Uh, so it can be used in the micro scale and also in the macro scale. So in the larger scale, uh, we talk about some physical objects and we can coat all sides of that or both sides of uh, a wafer, for example, and, and these kind of things. So there's uh, plenty of examples, uh, well mentioned, some mentioned here and, and more to come on the on the following slides. Uh, first, focusing on the micro scale more. So uh, there's here described uh, an example uh, where some photonic crystal structures are being uh, coded. So, so there, is, uh, there are SiO2, uh, so silica spheres, and then uh, you basically fill the uh, fill all the uh, voids with uh, with titanium dioxide in in this case uh, and uh, uh, in this uh, right hand side picture uh, there is more things going on so here uh, this is starting with an optical grating so this is kind of a micro or a nanoscale structure and uh, we start by introducing ALD that will actually fill the void completely so this next step, you can you can here see the original structure. Now it's all filled with uh, uh, ALD film, and and then uh, also uh, continued a little bit. We end up having actually a very smooth surface if we just continue ALD long enough on the such a surface. And then on top of that, uh, uh, in this case, there's been also uh, in the same reactor continued to deposit also an uh, anti-reflective coating on top. So multi-layer AR coating has been deposited on top. So these are some of the examples on the on the micro scale. Uh, and uh, and uh, there, so there's various uh, other types of uh, uh, things that you can imagine, uh, waveguides and, and such things that can benefit from this. Uh, in the macro, macroscopic scale, so uh, as mentioned, uh, we can coat various different complex object geometries, such as tubes. We can coat insides and outsides of tubes. Well, of course, only outsides of rods, and uh, and various uh, kind of like free form optics uh, lenses, high curvature lenses, uh, and and such things. Uh, it also uh, makes it possible to to use a very large batch size. So so instead of just coating on one lens, we can coat on hundreds of lenses at the same time, using this uh, uh, good conformality uh, and uniformity feature of of ALD. So uh, usually, as a kind of rule of thumb, it's very easy to get conformal coating. So coating everywhere with ALD. It's actually very difficult not to get coating everywhere. And uh, uh, but uh, uh, optimization is is definitely needed when uh, trying to make uh, kind of uniform enough films on a large batch and fast enough. And this is especially challenge for optical coatings. Where typically the, uh, the 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 film thickness needs to be easily in the kind of micrometer range, which is thick for ALD, and uh, so it means that it will take a long time. So we have to do it as quickly as we can, and also we 
need to use a, a large batch size to compensate because anyway we are slow. And and then uh, uh, and then uh, the application really requires good uniformity. So, like depending on the optical spec, that's what you are looking for. But uh, it may be that you need to have plus minus one percent or two percent uniformity on a large batch. It's a uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a challenge, and and then of course you need to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, here is an the macro scale example uh, of uh, coating on a basically a, a cube 150 millimeter uh, in in size but this this cube has all the other uh, sides but not the top so it's like an open box or open cube and placed inside a, an ald system again and then coated and uh, and uh, the the target is to coat both uh, both sides of each of the uh, each of these uh, glasses that consist or, or form the the cube, and uh, by by comparing then the the, the results after the deposition, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the the uniformity is is very very good. So these are thickness film thickness in nanometers. And uh, we see that uh, fitting these, we see that uh, uh, variation is around 0.4% uh, for the thickness, which is quite uh, 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 quite kind of amazing and certainly impossible to do with any other technique than, than ALD. Okay, there's a reference for that as well. Uh, here, another, another kind of example uh, uh, where ALD is used to coat uh, kind of half spheres, uh, and uh, and uh, then a, a special test method that was uh, kind of used to to measure the film thickness on on the uh, on the half sphere at different angles. And then there's uh, uh, in this paper there was uh, uh, st studies made on on kind of process. Uh, condition optimization to get uh, a very uniform film throughout the whole uh, whole structure. Okay, uh, so ALD can make conformal films. ALD can also make very various different materials. So almost any oxide material can be deposited with ALD and various other materials as well. So here, some typical uh, examples are shown here. So when making some optical coatings, then we use normally two materials, at least uh, a high index and a low index material. The most common combination being a very high index titanium oxide and a low index silicon dioxide. But uh, for different applications, uh, we use also various other combinations, including the uh, titanium oxide, aluminum oxide, which is quite common, and, and uh, tantalum oxide is also rather common material. Zinc sulfide is also a very good material as high index material, and uh, uh, some others, hafnium oxide also sometimes used. Uh, in addition to just these pure materials, uh, we can also make uh, a kind of engineered materials by making uh, nanolaminate structures as actually shown here on the right hand side. So uh, we can make uh, uh, using in this example using aluminum oxide and titanium oxide and making these types of nanolaminate structures. We can generate artificial materials that have index something between the, the titanium oxide and that uh, of the aluminum oxide. And uh, we can see that we can quite linearly uh, scale uh, whatever we like between these two materials. And uh, really it looks like this uh, uh, under the electron microscope that there is like in, in this case, there is about three nanometers of titanium oxide, which is the dark material. And then about seven angstroms of aluminum oxide, the light kind of white lines between. So this would be somewhere around here, 20% uh, aluminum oxide 
content. And uh, optically, this behaves really as bulk material because these are really so thin uh, layers here that this is not really kind of an optical stack. This is just bulk material optically. And uh, here are shown the dispersions of, of, the, of these uh, different uh, materials here, artificial materials going from titanium oxide to aluminum oxide, kind of smooth transition. Uh, Additionally, uh, process conditions such as temperature especially plays a role. So different, at different temperatures, we can get slightly different uh, properties. And then we can also make uh, completely kind of mixed structures. So instead of making one nanometer of this and three nanometers of that, we can just make uh, one cycle of this and three cycles of that, then you will not see any uh, lines like this anymore, it will just become a mixture. Uh, that is another way to generate artificial materials. And uh, so then we have many, many different ways of, of making these uh, materials and, uh, and uh, that's always a, a kind of a, a challenge or a task to choose the right material system and the way to do this. Uh, for a certain application. Uh, again, showing the dispersion curve, so the kind of optical properties of, of some of the most common materials that we that we use. So really the highest index we have is titanium oxide and typically the lowest is of silicon dioxide. Some fluorides sometimes used under this, but that's usually uh, these materials that we at least 95% of the time use. And uh, yes, there is uh, absorption on the on those. So if I go back to this a little, so this is showing the uh, uh, visible wavelength range. And uh, uh, we also, so different materials also have absorption at different uh, wavelengths. So we have to choose the right materials also based on that. And uh, for UV, we, we choose certain materials uh, that are kind of transparent there and don't have absorption, uh, visible, same kind of thing. And, and then uh, for infrared also, we have to look at that absorption. So certain materials uh, are more suitable there than, than others. And uh, uh, kind of extreme example of the, uh, of the absorption is, is the laser applications where you have very high power focused on a very small surface area and uh, uh, even uh, the slightest absorption can cause uh, kind of uh, uh, quite a lot of absorption in the small area and, and, and cause heating of the uh, of the coated lens or whatever the object is and uh, and uh, this heating can be so so severe that that it, it will uh, uh, cause kind of very large local temperature differences, which may cause that lens will crack or even in extreme cases kind of explode. So it's very important to, uh, to, to have materials with very low absorption. And uh, uh, in the laser applications, so, so there is the, the LIDT, uh, laser induced damage threshold measurements done. And, uh, and uh, ALD coatings have been uh, have been studied uh, and, and shown to be very, uh, very kind of good. So in this first study from already 2012, uh, there is actually a rather thick uh, mirror coating done by ALD, many, many layers there, aluminum oxide and titanium oxide, which was finally found to be uh, functioning quite well uh, or tolerating quite a lot of uh, uh, laser power. And uh, in a more recent study, uh, there was a com comparison between uh, ALD, aluminum oxide, and hafnium oxide compared with the ion beam sputtered aluminum oxide and hafnium oxide. And in, with both materials, the ALD material was found uh, to be uh, better than, than the IBS material, which is uh, IBS is generally used to make these kind of really demanding high purity, uh, low absorption uh, coatings. So definitely ALD can make very high quality films. 
Uh, moving on to more of the applications side of things. Uh, so, well, the most common thing for any kind of optical coatings is, is anti-reflective coatings so to reduce the reflections. So here is just a typical example of a, of a glass with single side coated with, uh, with an AR coating, kind of broadband for the visible wavelength range using titanium oxide and silicon dioxide, one version of the silicon dioxide that we have. And then comparing to, to uh, graphs here, the, the, the design and, and the measured. And uh, when they overlap nicely, then we are happy that we were able to, first of all, we know our materials and secondly, we can uh, manufacture uh, as we designed uh, to, to do. And uh, here's another example from uh, the UV range actually where we, in this case, used uh, uh, aluminum oxide as the high index material. Uh, it's not very high index, but anyway, higher than silicon dioxide and, and both very, very transparent in the UV. Again, a measurement and design uh, are matching well. And uh, uh, the, here is another example of, of uh, an anti-reflective coating on a 50 millimeter diameter uh, kind of PMMA, so polymer uh, object, highly curved object, and, uh, and uh, coating on all sides. And then, then uh, measuring the, maybe a little bit difficult to see, but one of these curves here is the, is the design. So the red dashed line there is the design and, and, uh, and uh, the, all the actual measurements at different uh, around uh, or all around the, uh, the object show uh, performance very close to the designed fit. So it's uh, showing that, uh, that the film is, is rather uniformly everywhere. Uh, another kind of example, and uh, also an example of the practical challenges that we have to deal with is a coating of for optical domes. In this case, 155 millimeters in diameter, like a half of a ball, again, and uh, uh, target is to make a uniform uh, coating on, on that. So again, an AR coating. And uh, uh, the difficulty is, of course, to code it, but also to measure it. And, uh, and uh, to be able to tune the process, we need something that we can measure. And it's rather difficult to measure on, on such a curved object. And, uh, uh, but uh, it's easier to measure on flat, flat, smaller samples. So what we did is this kind of uh, kind of dummy jig that we can mount uh, smaller samples on that and uh, and uh, use this for process optimization, measuring the, the thickness on these uh, on these flat samples. And then after tuning the process, then we can use that to coat the actual parts. So that's a, a typical way. Uh, sometimes we need to do with this uh, complex uh, shape objects. And uh, in this case. Uh, also the uniformity over the uh, over the uh, over the batch actually there were several uh, such objects uh, we found that 1.2 percent uh, on uniformity so that's uh, sufficient for this kind of uh, application so yes that's another uh, example of of the kind of three-dimensional objects. Here another such uh, example. So this is this time this is uh, kind of half of a cylinder and we are making a coating on both sides. In this case uh, a coating that uh, kind of uh, lets the visible light go through but blocks the infrared. So this is an infrared cutoff filter uh, and, uh, and this uh, is from an actual case where we use this uh, and this, this glass was used uh, as a part of a enclosure for a camera system. So the, the purpose was to prevent infrared uh, light going in. And, uh, and uh, uh, we managed to make very uh, uniform coatings on, on, on these and use a kind of large, relatively large batch size uh, also to coat this. So uh, again, another example that only ALD can do. Uh, it's also possible to make uh, uh, more kind of complex designs with ALD. 
So in this first example here, so there is a, a beam splitter here. So uh, done with, uh, with the ALD, uh, totally 23 layers and 1.2 microns thick. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it uh, uh, kind of separates that uh, the, the, the P and S polarized light behave differently. So it can be used to manipulate light that way. And again, following design and, and measured uh, values quite nicely. Uh, in the lower example here, uh, if you look at this, this graph here, so we, we are looking at the refractive index as a function of the film thickness. So this is 1.4 micron thick film stack. And uh, unlike usually where you have a, a certain thickness of low index material and then uh, another stack kind of a, a, a film of uh, uh, and another thickness of high index material, then again, certain thickness of low index, high index. That's how you make the stack normally. But uh, in this kind of so-called Rugate design, uh, the, the idea is that the, the refractive index is, is uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not only those two endpoints, but uh, between these endpoints, so the high and low, there would be a smooth transition like sliding from high to low not not uh, uh, abrupt change and uh, in ALD it's possible to do that actually we cannot fully slide from one index to the other but we can do it in a small uh, several smaller steps and that's what we have done here and uh, uh, and this this filter was a, <clears throat> a band stop filter so that it allows other uh, wavelengths to go through, but blocks something between 500 and 600 uh, nanometers. And again, designing, designed and, uh, and measured are matching quite nicely. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I mentioned waveguide already earlier. So there's uh, some things that have been already done for waveguides. So here are some examples. So in this, in this case, again, earlier, uh, uh, example, uh, this ALD coding here is used to to change the dimension of the uh, of the slot in this uh, silicon slot waveguide. So this by this coating thickness uh, can adjust that how small gap uh, is is finally left there. And uh, this nice picture here shows uh, actually that there in this case the 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 silicon substrate had various different sizes of slots uh, to begin with, and then there is a 100 nanometer titanium oxide coating uh, that, that covers the whole feature. But this also kind of demonstrates you how things would go when you start filling the, uh, uh, a slot like this, and if you would continue from this more, you would end up something like this, and if you would still continue more, you would finally have it completely filled. And it, continuing even more, you start kind of adding on top and making it smoother and smoother. That's what happens when you do ALD on such structures. Okay, that, that was an example of, of how to uh, manipul manipulate uh, those waveguides. And here is a more recent uh, thing for similar type of uh, structure. Uh, but in this case, uh, the ALD coating is an erbium doped aluminum oxide coating, which, which is uh, amplifier coating. So it's uh, used to amplify the, the light. So uh, quite a lot of things can be done uh, using these types of materials. Okay, then moving on to uh, how you can actually uh, realize this, the, the ALD coding is that uh, there are a couple of different ways. So there are what is called batch ALD, the kind of traditional maybe way of doing things. Uh, so there is an uh, ALD tool, the machine. Uh, if we cut it open, we see that there is a vacuum chamber and inside the vacuum chamber, there is a, another chamber, which we call reaction chamber. And uh, inside the reaction chamber, we have parts that we are actually coating. So is showing a couple of different examples. Uh, in both cases, a lot of 100 by 100 millimeter glass uh, sheets to be coated simultaneously. 
So those uh, glass sheets on, on one plane here and then many, many shelves. And uh, when doing the coating, we are coating all, all the uh, substrates on every shelf and on both sides uh, simultaneously. Okay, uh, once after loading the substrates in the chamber, we close the reaction chamber, put it inside the, the ALD system, pump down to the vacuum pressure that we use and heat it up to process temperature. And then we start introducing these uh, precursors one by one. So first precursor coming in, covering all the surfaces, any excess material going out. And then after that, second precursor coming in again, covering all, all the surfaces. And, and this way we, we continue uh, as long as we, we need to, to get the film thickness that we are looking for. And uh, when using, making like optical stack, then we just have more of these precursor sources. And instead of pulsing this A and B, we start pulsing, let's say A and C to, to deposit uh, uh, another material. Uh, typical deposition rate is uh, one or two microns per day, depending on the, the setup, temperature, materials, and other things, but roughly kind of rule of thumb, like a, one or two microns per day. But it can be done on a very large batch. So in this case, uh, example, uh, really the largest that this, this tool can do is about eight square meters of, of coated area that, that we are coating. Uh, uh, simultaneously. So that's how we compensate the, the low deposition rate by bigger batch. And the, the other way of doing ALD is uh, what is called spatial ALD. So in this example, uh, we have a, so it, we have a two of those materials that we need to make the deposition. So a metal precursor here and then the other co-reactant or, or the other material, in this case, not using like water, but instead oxygen plasma. So anyway, here is uh, uh, the, the oxygen plasma zone then, and these are constantly on, not pulsed, but they are on all the time. And then uh, the substrates are passing through these regions. So this, they are on a turntable that is, that is being rotated. And uh, rotation is kind of easier or faster to do than pulsing the gases and purging the gases. And, uh, and we can run this with much higher deposition rates. So typical deposition rate with this kind of system is one or two microns per hour, not per day, but per hour. So these are already reasonably high uh, uh, deposition rates compared also to other thin film techniques. But the drawback is that now the batch size uh, uh, is smaller, so it's just kind of one plane, so we can stack things on top of each other anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, in this system, the C2R system from Benek, uh, batch size is maximum seven pieces of 200 millimeter wafers. So that gives you an idea of, of the batch uh, size. Okay, uh, then. Uh, uh, finally, I would like to say just a few words about Benek. Uh, so uh, we are located in Espoo. Uh, we have plenty of ALD tools capacity there. We are using them uh, for our uh, own development and, and we are using them for, for coding services and we are also using them to manufacture uh, some displays in this uh, that are our products. Uh, we are totally about 160 people and gro growing fast, uh, around 30 million uh, revenue and uh, more than 30 years of industrial ALD experience. So we have been manufacturing uh, these kind of displays uh, in Espo already 35 years. So uh, our two businesses being this uh, manufacturing the electroluminescent display that we market using the Luminec brand and uh, and uh, the atomic layer deposition equipment and services. The, the displays, so these are very, very much based on ALD. Uh, uh, they, they come in various different types. So some things that go for very harsh conditions, uh, uh, harsh industrial and, and military applications, uh, to nice design feature for the transparent displays uh, and uh, and uh, well, all kinds of uh, 
see through applications that are necessary. And, and uh, uh, then we can use the transparent display laminated between the larger sheets of glass to form, for example, like in this picture, a uh, uh, windshield of, of Valtra tractor. So there are, that's a practical example of where to use these type of displays. Uh, in the ALD business unit, we manufacture various different kind of ALD equipment for various different types of applications from ranging from the research to a larger scale batch production, uh, the spatial ALD systems, roll to roll, and, and uh, dedicated uh, uh, kind of cluster systems for semiconductor industry as well. Uh, and then uh, a little piece of advertisement that uh, we have plans for, for next year to, to hire approximately 30 people uh, to support the ALD business growth. And there will be opportunities in, uh, in various different uh, areas, ranging from the ALD process and application development, which is usually uh, a very good place to start with. And, uh, but also equipment engineering, so that's uh, hard, uh, the kind of uh, mechanical, electrical, software engineering, then more practical things, equipment testing and field, field service for those who like to travel and see the world, and uh, sales and marketing type of roles, and maybe some others as well. So that's as a small advertisement to the end. Thank you. That would be, that would be the uh, all I uh, plan to say, and thanks for your attention, and uh, looking forward to see if you have many good questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes, we, ha yeah. we have some time for a few questions. Uh, not all, there is a lot of questions, and, and we have to then save some of these so that you can contact uh, Sami later by email to ask the questions. I can also mention that uh, at UEF, we have also Benek equipment and we are doing R&D on, on optical coatings with, the, with this uh, ALD technology. So you can, you can do your, some research or, or whatever, uh, start the, with that at our university and then join perhaps uh, Benek. There's one further question about, about this, any opportunity for fresh students in R&D or do you, do you want to only need persons who have a 10 plus, 20 plus year experience on, on technologies? Uh, well, yes, uh, both. So we have already many, many experienced people, but, uh, but also, uh, of course, we are all the time uh, looking for, looking for new, new people uh, with, with uh, new, maybe some new ways of thinking as well. So uh, yes, both. Uh, more fresh and, and, and more experienced. Both are perfectly good fit with, with our, our needs. Thank you. Then there's a question about that. Is it possible to do coatings on small plastic objects, just as uh, poluamide or peak? So one to two millimeter tubes. Uh, Yes, it is possible to do that. So, of course, there with when, always when coating polymers, there is some uh, some temperature limitation. So we are a little bit limited in in the materials that we can do, but there are still some materials that that uh, can be done without any problem. Uh, and then uh, small objects, no problem, can be coated. The practical thing is to find some fixturing how to hold those parts, uh, but uh, there are different ways. And uh, if and I believe that the question was that these are tubes, so coating tubes from the outside is is very easy. Coating tubes from the inside depends on the on the uh, kind of dimensions of the tube. So short tubes get easily coated, uh, but if the tubes are very long, then uh, uh, we we would need to find a way to force the gas flow to go into uh, the tubes. So there are some things to consider, but definitely possible. Right. Does the conformal nature of ALD help to reduce the surface roughness materials with titanium oxide coating? Yes, uh, the, um, that, is, that is true that uh, ALD can be used to reduce the surface roughness. So what it will actually do, it will, it can, ALD coating can very nicely kind of uh, remove any 
uh, kind of smoothen out any any holes or cracks, these kind of kind of valleys. But but uh, uh, when you have peaks, you know, if you have some spikes on the surface, those will not be removed anywhere. They will just be kind of coded conformally. So uh, it will efficiently remove all the valleys, but uh, uh, only make the peaks kind of a little bit broader. But uh, but uh, that's that's yeah what what happens. And uh, different AD codings also do that in a little bit different way. So the best best for this kind of thing is to use some amorphous coding. Uh, so some AD codings uh, materials can be also crystalline, and then the crystal growth can actually cause also more roughness. So amorphous material would be recommended for smoothening the surfaces. Right. And then one more technical question. Does uh, hydrophobicity of the surface affect the deposition process during the deposition cycles? Because uh -huh. you used the water also at, at one stage. Yeah. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, and uh, um, but um, ALD can be used to coat materials like uh, like Teflon or gold and these kind of things that are generally difficult to coat. But uh, adhesion is not uh, that great, uh, so that that uh, uh, adhesion is 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 not as good as when depositing on anything that has oxide surface naturally, like uh, any ceramic, most ceramic materials or metal, uh, non-noble metal materials and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, glass and such things. But uh, it is possible to uh, to coat. But yes, it uh, it affects and some some. Coding surfaces that are difficult to coat uh, may take few ALD cycles that there is practically no growth. But uh, once it starts, uh, then uh, uh, it may be that there starts like a kind of island type growth uh, on certain areas. Uh, but then when the islands grow together, then after after that you will have a completely kind of normal ALD deposition. So in practice, what you see is that you might lose your first uh, one or two nanometers uh, for this initiation, but after that, uh, it grows kind of normal. So okay, again, if you're trying to deposit one nanometer film, it may be difficult, uh, but if you're depositing 100 nanometer film, then that's probably perfectly all right. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. It's, it's three past uh, three, we have to stop here. So thanks a lot, got a great presentation and we hope all the success for your company and this technology. We are very proud to be Finns here and also very proud about this new technology that will really, really be, let's say there has been a lot of technologies for coatings and it, it's, it's great to see another technology which is so accurate and high quality and, and especially confirmable uniform and so on. So there will be a plenty of applications where we, we hope to see uh, this technology to be used. So thanks a lot again, Sami, about your very nice presentation. And, and we have another presentation starting in 12 minutes from now. So come back quarter past three. So thank you. Thank you. Bye.